Well, if religious ideas were genuinely trivial from a civic standpoint, playing no appreciable role in how people dealt with anyone other than themselves and their immediate families and their voluntary associations, religion could be more comfortably ignored. And today's news from the Pew Foundation, as reported at least in uh, the Times and uh, USA Today, suggests that maybe that's happening. Maybe people aren't taking religion quite so seriously. My favorite fact in that, some of you will have seen this study, my favorite fact is that one in five atheists declares a belief in God. <laughs> now that tells us something about the rigor of this conversation. And consider the case of Mitt Romney in this last winter's primary campaign. His famous speech about his Mormon faith implied that anyone who held his faith against him was biased, but Romney did not declare his religion irrelevant of his performance as a potential president, as John F. Kennedy did in 1960. Nor did Romney invite critical interrogation of the religious ideas that ostensibly strengthened his qualifications for office. Skeptics seemed afraid to ask about Joseph Smith and so on because they did not want to be accused of secular bias. So proclaim your faith, assert its relevance to your political leadership, and then suffer no questions about its soundness. Tell, but don't ask. This seems to be our motto today in the public discussion of religious ideas. Tell, but don't ask. So there's this, uh, there's this great line by the sociologist of religion, Peter Berger, that if India is the most religious country on earth, and Sweden is the least religious country on earth, that America is a nation of Indians ruled by Swedes. <laughs> Berger, Berger made that comment probably at an earlier time in American history when that was probably descriptively true. Um, well, as an Indian, in a lot of ways, I guess, uh, in, in this way, as a believer, let me say a couple of things about that observation, which is that I, I think Berger, who in my last reading is a pretty committed Christian himself, meant it descriptively. But I think it's understood in some quarters of America as a little bit too prescriptive, which effectively is, why can't those Indians be more like us Swedes? And I frankly think there's a hint of colonialism to that, particularly in a democracy, which I define, frankly, as a place where what matters to people matters. And 70% plus of Americans say that religion is very significant to them. And I, for one, think that if you were to take any other identity in which Americans say matters to them, whether it's race or gender or nation, we would take that seriously. And I suggest that we consider religion in a somewhat similar category. That because it matters to people, we understand that it should be taken seriously as, amongst other things, a question of identity. The Bush administration has spoken a lot about America as freedom, as America as democracy, I think that part of what America should stand for in the 21st century is pluralism. What does that mean? Simply, in one line, a society where people from different backgrounds, including maybe especially religious backgrounds, live together in equal dignity and mutual loyalty. I also wonder um, whether we need to alienate, I guess I would say, those who could otherwise be part of our coalition just because we don't think they do their theology or, po or, or philosophy right. For example, if an atheist or a secular humanist opposes torture and a religious person opposes torture, isn't it more important to work together than to ensure that everyone's coming to that position from what we would deem a sound perspective? After all, what's more important here? Finding common ground to advance the greater good or ensuring that everybody got there the right way. So let me just conclude with a brief story. John Leland and Isaac Backus were Baptist ministers during the American founding era. They believed some things about religion that Thomas Jefferson undoubtedly thought were quite implausible. Yet these folks, all of them, agreed that the states needed to disestablish religion, all religions, any religion, including the Baptist faith which was not the establishment at that time, but they agreed that their own faith should not be established. Jefferson did not rebuff Leland and these other Baptists by telling them to drop their implausible religious ideas. Instead, Leland and Jefferson worked together on issues of shared concern and had a very effective coalition, I might add, and 
eventually uh, the First Amendment is, became a product of their efforts. Today there are many descendants of Baptists, of these Baptists in America, who have taken consistent positions against government-sponsored prayers in schools and government-subsidized religious activities. These Baptists do so because they believe the government exceeds its jurisdiction when it meddles in religious matters. When the state meddles in this way, it not only runs roughshod over people's consciences, it also warps and weakens faith, the faith that the government embraces.